Well, Colonel, there she is, the P-51B. Looks like the old Mustang, doesn't she? Yes, much of the construction is exactly the same. But Mr. Deach, using the same basic design as the P-51A, has built a ship that'll fight from 25,000 feet on up. That's the new engine, eh? That's the Rolls-Royce Merlin 61, built by Packer. It's a 12-cylinder job like the Allison and the P-51A. But it packs a military rating of 1,520 horsepower and a war emergency rating of 1,630 horsepower and a two-stage supercharger. This two-stage blower and external fuel tanks mean it can serve as a high-altitude escort fighter for long-range bombers, besides doubling as a low-altitude fighter, dive, or low-level bomber. And with 150-gallon fairing tanks under each wing, your pilots will be hopping the Atlantic pretty soon without too much trouble. And we're putting an 85-gallon tank in the fuselage, back of the pilot seat. Now, these tanks, or the bombs, these are dummies, of course, go on these racks on each side, as you know. Without these racks, the plane has 15 miles per hour more top speed. But this ship is faster than the old model, even with the racks on. And we're swinging a four-bladed prop to absorb the extra power. It's a Hamilton Hydromatic constant speed job with cuffs. Now, we're using the same laminar flow airfoil as before. It made the Mustang such a fast ship. And, uh... This is a newly designed aileron that gives the ship an extremely fast rate of roll. We call it the sealed balance type. I have a diagram here that illustrates how this aileron works. Now, the normal aileron looks like this. When the aileron moves up into the airflow, air leaks through the space between the aileron and the wing. That's where a lot of the force applied to the stick is wasted. But our sealed balance aileron lessens to a great extent the force required. Because the part of the airflow that formerly escaped can no longer do so. The cloth connection stops it. Therefore, this airflow, which formerly escaped, exerts a force down on the airtight cloth, which in turn enables the pilot to force the wing down with much less effort. You don't have to tell me why that's important in lining up those 450s there on a Messerschmitt or a Fokker Wolf. We have a pretty insulation on those guns. Let's take a look at him. Sam. Give me a hand with these access doors here. I uh, want you to notice how we laid the guns on the side to eliminate any bulge in the air force. We're using a simplified mounting that allows removal in a few seconds. What about the guns the Jerry's and the Japs are packing? What kind of protection does the pilot have from enemy gunfire? Well, let's take a look at the sketches, shall we? We'll show you. Here we are. The P-51B is equipped with face-hardened steel armor plating and an armor glass windshield. This affords protection for the pilot from bullets hitting within this area. We've also protected the coolant tank in the nose from frontal attack. In other words, in flight, you get these cones of protection from enemy bullets. Which should be comforting news to the pilot. Well, personally, I think it's a good idea to get rid of the enemy before he has a chance to try the armor plating. You've got something there, Major. Arthur, let's stop shooting the breeze and get this ship off the ground. <laughs> okay, Bob. Colonel, if you'll join me in the control tower, we'll have grandstand seats. Right. See you later, Chilton. Right, sir. Bob will give a continuous radio report on everything he does in this plane which might deviate from normal pilot procedure, even if it's scratching his ear in the middle of a loop. Hello, Mr. Deeds. Oh, Charlie. These are the gentlemen I called you about. Colonel, let's get over to where we can see things. Ah, there's Bob. Now, you notice he gets in the plane from the rear. And uh, flaps are kept down to prevent anyone stepping on them. Now, Bob, before he gets into the cockpit, checks the Zeus buttons on the radio compartment panels. Once inside the cockpit, he gets comfortable. Adjusts the rudder pedals, gets his shoulder harness set. Well, they should be ready by now. Charlie, let's give him a call. Okay, Mr. Deeds. Hello, Army 115. This is Mines Tower. 
The air's all yours, Bob. Nothing expected for the next hour. Over. Hello, Mines Tower. This is Army 115. Well, here's where I start the monologue. Hope your ears can take it. I've checked, checked the servicing of the ship to have an idea of the amount of load I'm carrying. The rate of climb can vary as much as 500 feet a minute, depending on the load. I close the cockpit enclosure by first pulling the left side into position, then lowering the upper portion. And I make sure the enclosure handle is locked in place with a safety latch, and rear hatch and felt molding is checked. He checks to see that the warning pins in the right sliding track are down. Pins checked. Starting the regular before starting engine check. Oh, by the way, if you were going to make an engine run up on the ground, especially pulling more than 40 inches of manifold pressure, be sure that the tail of the P-51B is anchored securely, that the flaps are kept up. You see, the weight of the new Rolls-Royce engine has moved the center of gravity forward. As a result, the slipstream from the prop is liable to force the tail up. During my regular check, I make sure that the emergency boost control is in automatic as I'm only to use it in case of war emergency for not more than five minutes at a time. Making sure supercharger control in automatic and not in low. Coolant and oil switches checked in automatic. Fuel booster pump on normal. Finish check, starting engine. Clear. Fuel booster pump draws from whatever tank the selector is on. We try to cut down on the number of things a pilot has to do. That's why the ship has an automatic manifold pressure regulator connected to the throttle. But the pilot will have to be careful under icing conditions because the automatic regulator will try to compensate until the carburetor is completely iced up. May I have the microphone, please, Colonel? Are you ready, Bob? She's warmed up, ready for taxi. Here I go. The attitude of this ship makes ground visibility very poor. So essing is necessary even more than in most airplanes with a conventional type landing gear. In order to save the brakes, use the steerable tailwheel feature. If I hold the stick at neutral, or slightly aft of neutral, the tailwheel is steerable six degrees on each side. All I have to do is move the rudder pedal. The six-degree steering feature doesn't allow sharp turns. In order to make one, I simply push the stick forward as the tail wheel unlocks and becomes full swiveling. However, excessive throttle or excessive use of brakes with the stick forward should be avoided to prevent nosing over. Making regular cockpit check. If in doubt, use the checklist. Every Army plane's got one. Flaps up. Pool is open. Trim tabs, seven degrees, right rudder trim. Note that I switched the fuel booster pump to emergency. The pump draws from whichever tank the selector is on. Instruments, okay. Switches on main panel, okay. Checking oxygen gauge. Switches right panel, okay. Gas tanks, full. Running, Running up, up engine, engine checking, checking mags. Now, I use no flaps normally for takeoff. But if I were carrying bombs or external tanks, I might use them. So to show the operation, I'll use them this time. The best settings, 20 degrees flaps and 6 degrees tail heavy on the elevators, as the plane will get off more quickly and give a greater feeling of control that way. The manifold pressure can be used as you need it up to 61 inches. The propeller control is fully forward for the maximum RPM of 3,000. Taking off. Keeping the tail on the ground and use of rudder trim, as I said before, counteracts normal torque action on takeoff. A bit of back pressure on the stick has to be used to keep the tail down.
landing gear up. Here come the flaps. Practically no settling when they're raised. Fuel booster pump in normal. The plane feels normal now that it's off the ground. I'm heading upstairs. Let's get a pair of binoculars so we can see what's going on. Colonel, there's a pair, Major. Thank you. 